my friends, welcome, this is Archangel. Normally, I want to spread the word about male devaluation to every pair of ears that I can. I lament the fact that we, the awakened males, are so pathetically small in number. It seems that we are a fringe element, a failure compared to the totality of the gynocentric establishment, also known as the vaginasty. Yet tonight, while walking through the store, I had a moment where I took pride in our small numbers. I felt like a special member of an elite club, a club that most males will never be apprised of, let alone join. I am part of a super badass team of warriors. Essentially, I had a fight club moment where I experienced satisfaction at my involvement in a hardcore underground. I was a covert member of a chosen elite. I was undercover, a seemingly average dude who watched and interacted with average everyday people while secretly possessing insight and understanding that the ignorant populace was naive to. Knowledge about the true natures and motivations of humans, their cultures and their current deity, females and the divine feminine. If you are hearing this because you choose to, then we are the elite, the awakened, and we are fortunate to be awakened, to be conscious in an unconscious world. We are, as Morpheus and Neo, maneuvering amongst the stampede herds of clueless drones. We observe people going about their business and feeding the societal meat grinder, oblivious puppets who lie in bed at night and wonder why they felt unfulfilled, even though they did as they were told by chaining themselves to pie-in-the-sky traditionalist ideas, such as family, a mortgage, and a job. I never really had this impression before, a sense of positivity, of specialness in our rare numbers. I am always so preoccupied with spreading revolution against devaluation and disposability that when I see males fall right back to slavery, I am continually met with frustration quickly followed by disappointment that male empowerment was not taking off like wildfire, that males did not want any part of their own emancipation. I have spent so much time being disappointed that male awakening was not going viral around the globe, that males were not sucking up my messages like the desert floors sucking up the rains. Then today, out of nowhere, I had this fight club moment after seeing guys in the store aisles, lifeless, clueless, pushing carts behind the boss, while others in the meat section took public reprimand and chastisement from the female goddess carrying his leash beside him. And suddenly I took pride that I was special. I was one of the elite chosen to possess disturbing knowledge about the human animal. Throughout my childhood and into my teen and early adult years, I have always held the notion that I was special, that I was different, like a cosmic superhero. Indeed, this was probably my developing ego wanting to be better than everybody else. Still, I was always drawn to the idea that I was extraordinary. My personality favored being special, elite, rare, going against the grain, or fighting for the underdog. Maybe because of gynocentric indoctrination, or perhaps because of the supplemental religious and traditionalist brainwashing, all of which serve the same end, feeding the female favoring societal machine. Hence, I have an aversion to mainstream conformity. If everybody zigs, I have the impulse to zag, even if I want to zig also. Maybe it's the inner male rebel, and if everybody was MGTOW, I wouldn't be so rare and special anymore, and maybe I would want to be something different. Anyhow, being in public, seeing lifeless shells and emancipated shovels obeying their female overlords at the store, I suddenly felt like Neo, who understood the nature of the Matrix as he moved amongst the ignorant enslaved avatars going about their business within that Matrix. Chumps who think they have a handle on life, yet have no clue what was really going on, nor did they stop and pause to wonder what that guy in the sunglasses and trench coat knows about reality that they perhaps do not. Indeed, possessing the understandings that we do, my fellow warriors, is a sobering calling, and seeing reality and the machinations behind our existence, well, we are like physicists contemplating wormholes who are made to move amongst kindergartners who eat cookies and take naps waiting for Santa to come around every 365 days. We are the enlightened, surrounded by toddlers ignorantly unaware of the cruel realities of life and this world. 
Whether by happenstance or by design, I am one of the chosen, one of the elite. I am awakened, and I see behind the curtain, behind the Cheshire Cat smile. I have knowledge that would shake the collective male to their very core if they were truly to absorb and comprehend what I preach. We, the truly awakened, not the walk talkers, not the purple skirt chasers, we are few in numbers, not because we don't want males around the globe to join us, but rather because our assertions are so radical as to question the very fabric of existence, to the point that people reject our insane notions out of principle. How dare we challenge the orbit of the celestial bodies, when everybody knows that the sun revolves around us. Likewise, we are a chosen few in numbers, for we dare to suggest that males are devalued and that females are elevated and worshipped, when societal canon and prejudicial propaganda have clearly established that females are oppressed and males have overzealous privilege. My friends, we are the League of Shadows. We speak truths. We rebuke inequity. We seek justice. Yet most of us are unknown secret agents, members of an underground resistance in which it behooves us to stay incognito and undermine the vaginasty from a place of anonymity. I fear not the information that I possess, and if need be, I would be the visible face of male empowerment. Yet, on the flip side, there can be amazing power in faceless voices of defiance. You see, if we can get the greater populace to be made aware of MGTOW, and that MGTOW is growing, expanding, flourishing, yet it is veiled in anonymity, this creates fear and paranoia amongst the general populace. Who, who are these warriors, these males that dare to criticize females? Who might these rebels be? A, a, a co-worker? A son? A friend? What the hell? Who are these people? These fat, ugly, jaded, gay woman haters? Who are they? Are they in my neighborhood? Why are they here? What do they want? Wait! What was that noise? Meanwhile, all that the general toddler public sees is words of anarchy and voices of defiance on the internet that spread red pill truths. And so when the curious fence riders, the Neo Andersons of the world, become intrigued enough from the tantalizing whispers and rumors of something called the Matrix, they will then search us out and find us. And it is not simply that you find the Male Empowerment Club and join it. There are many layers of male activism and awareness that you pass before you truly reach male empowerment. It's like qualifying to get into the army, then earning your way into the special forces, then securing a spot on an elite detachment within the special forces ensconced within the greater army. Males are born and mistreated because they are deemed disposable by nature, by the world, by society, by females, by everyone. Next, some abused emasculated males will reach a point of personal critical mass, where they seek respite, reasons, answers, like-minded peoples or communities to explain their suffering, and thus males first find their way into traditionalism and or anti-feminism. If they search a little further, they may find their way into men's rights, and still even a more rare few go on to become MGTOW, the elite special detachment within the male spheres. So, if you are here listening to me right now, you are either a troll, a gynocentric spy, or you are the elite of the elite, the apex of the awakened. You have made your way into the nightclub, then found your way into the VIP section, and finally, you gained access to the secret back room within the VIP section, within the exclusive club, where all the top dogs come. In this context, I don't feel like such a failure. When I started posting my messages, I envisioned viral success, that my messages and passion would span the globe. Yet, I have been less than instrumental in stirring revolution. In fact, I am still unknown in the MGTOW community. I observe others with crazy popularity and channels that started much later than mine that have already amassed double, triple, quadruple the subscribers and ten times the amount of views. And I think, man, I suck. Nobody likes me. I have no growth, and in fact, my viewership is declining. But then, what is my priority? Winning approval and validation, or spreading a message? 
I understand. I am an embarrassment to the community. Aside from a rare few, nobody mentions me, my content, or my existence. Perhaps in one breath I say something that people can get behind. And then further on in the video, or in the next video, I totally go off the reservation and talk about gender bending or spiritual woo-woo stuff. I just can't seem to be pinned down to preach the approved party line. You see, I put out messages to compel imagination, individual thought, not groupthink. But yes, I understand I am poorly received, and I grind most viewers' nerves somehow on some level. But I will not soft pedal my truths to win likes and views. So really, this channel is the secret room within the secret VIP section within the exclusive club. Most males that get into the club rarely make it to the VIP section, and the males that get into the VIP section will lounge there enjoying the more tame messages of the content producers on that level. Fewer still will make it to the secret room, yet a very select hardened few will make it to the secret room within the secret room, where I issue debriefings that most people cannot stomach. So I am the elite within the elite. I'm not better, but I am secure and I am happy to let the larger producers run interference and take the spotlight and deal with the trolls as I remain a powerful secret that a select special detachment know about. A special few who might trickle ideas down to the larger figures for general dispersal. Some males have queried why my channel flounders, why it is not bigger, more popular. Well, maybe some don't like my voice. Maybe some don't like my preachy delivery. Maybe my satire falls flat because I am not really funny. Maybe they object to the lengths of my videos. Or they are apprehensive that I might say something agreeable in one breath and then in the next breath step on so many deep, unpleasant nerves all at once. Perhaps people do not like my low-budget visuals or quality. I am, after all, using ancient equipment. But my time and energy and passion goes into my messages. Every moment I am not working my job or attending to daily maintenance such as cleaning, shopping, etc., I am busy observing, quantifying, and arranging thought for consumption. My time goes into my messages. Every single day, everything is about the messages, not the entertainment. I do not solicit money. I do not even look at the analytics of the channel. I do not want to get caught up in ego or popularity or depressed over my lack of it. It's on to the next message, then the next message after that. If I was selling something like a brand or rhetoric to get me views and income, then I would take the messages that guys like and package and repackage them over and over again. No, I spend money and irretrievable time spreading red pills and feeling out different facets of life from this perspective, only to be called every name in the book and criticized mercilessly in order that one or two males out there might be awakened. Early on, my paltry viewership made me feel like a loser, fighting a losing battle. I had visions of world revolution, yet I am an embarrassment, a fringe element in a male circle that society considers a fringe element. That's the irony. It's a good thing I'm used to ostracization and rejection. Still, I see my revolution failure and my rapidly declining view rate, and that really bothered me for a while. But now I see that as good, like separating the SEALs from the general enlisted Navy. Not everyone can make it here, and not everyone has what it takes to be members of Special Operation codename Liberation Y. Perhaps the larger channels that secretly keep tabs on me will take some of my good messages and pass them on to larger audiences. Great. In fact, anyone listening, you can mirror my videos, copy them, use them to further male empowerment, but not detract from it. I will send you the transcripts for any given video, and you can read it verbatim on your own channel. I don't mind. I want the messages to get out. Please use any of my embarrassing content to save other brothers, or make your own videos. Even if you repeat the same things over and over, the more voices we have saying the same thing, the more of a united force we become. A choir is a choir because the members sing the same song. Make one video, make a dozen. 
This is not a ploy or a pity party. I want the messages to get out there. And since I cannot reach as many people as I desire, because apparently I suck, I'm crazy, I'm an embarrassing tinfoil hat totally off the reservation, yet maybe somebody listening can pass these messages on to a greater audience. Oh, I will never stop. I have much more Looney Tunes material on the way. But even in the wake of my failure to incite revolution, I still feel a passion and an urgency to get males awakening. And those few that do receive my messages have made it through so many various checkpoints to be here. And together we are a hardened force, an ultra elite secret force within the greater special forces. Gentlemen, you are my comrades in this elite force. I'm not better than anyone else here. In fact, I am probably lesser. Indeed, we all have our functions. Some of the bigger channels take the heat so that I can continue to churn out messages that are raw, not tailored to pacify a growing popularity or audience. Friends, the next time you are in public and seeing dead zombie males, take solace in your membership to such an elitist club. You are the chosen few, strong enough, bold enough, wise enough to make it to the secret room within the secret room where most males could never tread. You made it past all the sideshows, past men's rights and anti-feminism, past tradcons and purple pill distractions, even past all the pickup artist crap. You saw through all the BS and you made it to the elite detachment within the special forces. Take pride the next time you are in public and you see the general populace of miserable males running around tending to our societal goddesses. Think of how hard earned your liberation, your awakening is. How lucky you are to be awakened. Pause and take gratification in your Fight Club membership that you are a member of an elite hardcore underground. Not where males beat each other, but where males celebrate and empower each other. Let viewership dwindle. Let me continue to be an embarrassment that most people will not acknowledge. I am not going away. Males around the world are hurting right now. They are killing themselves right now. Help me to free males. Stand with me. Live free.